Welcome uh, here at, in Eugene, Oregon, uh, Astro and Rolf Prima. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys the shop. It's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming all the way. <laughs> yeah. Should we go inside? Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Oh. カゴくついたトレックが止まってる。あ。あれだ。リゾットを乗せてるんだ。Yes。ああ。ダンスフェス。ダンスフェスバイク。いや、やば。かわいい。ね。飛び乗るのかな。お、すげえ。おお。すげ
Oh, and obviously we have the we have a putting green over here. <laughs> Matt <laughs> is uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the the pro shop of of <laughs> putters. <laughs> you have your choice of putters. <laughs> so uh, Matt is super into golfing and uh, oh, wow. yeah, he's a he's a man of very uh, a lot of hobbies that cost way too much. <laughs> but he's got golf clubs, fishing. Uh, you know, oh, wow. Oh, wow. biking, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. He is. yeah, so if you ever need to get fit for a golf club, come on down. <laughs> He's going to open his own pro shop someday. Matt, right? Matt, yeah, Matt, is, Matt has been around here for, I don't know, going on at least... It's definitely over 10 years. It might be 13 or so years. Oh, wow. Um, he's been kind of the guy. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is sales, customer service. He's done international sales. He's done domestic sales. He's done, he's done pretty much everything in the oh. company. He built wheels for six months when he first started. So oh, wow. <laughs> um, pretty much everybody that is here can build a wheel mm -hmm. for you. So that's kind of an important part of when you come on. Like I personally started as a, a wheel builder here uh, eight years ago and worked my way into buying, purchasing and production management. And then now the general manager. So yeah, uh, let's head on to the oh. back, the exciting stuff. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like so. This is kind of where everything happens. Uh, this is where at least assembly happens. This is where every single wheel gets built in this in this room. Um, we will eventually go back to the back, and that's where our alloy rims are rolled and made, and drilled, and all that. Um, but we'll start up here. Um, QC. Every rim goes through QC. Actually, let's start. Let's start at the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. um, Not all. This is Ben. Ben. Uh, ben. Ben is the lone man left behind today. <laughs> but he's cranking out some wheels. Right now he's just doing uh, some decaling, or some, some carbon wheels that we're sending out, hopefully in the next couple days. Um, but those are pretty much almost all the way through process. Mm -hmm. Obviously the decals are pretty much the last thing that goes onto a wheel before QC. This big machine, by the way, is, it's a, a lot of people use it as a wheel building machine. We do not. This is kind of a, we use it as a, we use it as a way to keep our wheel builders wrists from going absolutely awful. Um, oh. It is a tensioning machine only for us. We don't really, we never will put something through and send it out just from this machine. But this puts tension into a wheel hmm. and then a wheel builder will, Ben, Neil, myself, will build up the wheel and get it through the rest of the process. Um, but everything starts as a hub. Uh, most of our hubs are White Industries hubs. Um, oh. And so, you know, you guys are, I'm sure, familiar with CLD hubs, but a lot of our, our uh, wheels are built with CLD hubs. Mm. Um, and the Boost CLD pluses. Mm. Um, obviously, same thing on the Rolf side. Rolfs are. Oh, no. So, oh. Rolf Prima is. Mm -hmm. Astral started with Rolf. Um, mm. Rolf is made by the the hubs are made by White Industries, mm. um, so they have the same internals as the White Industries hubs. Everything is pretty much the same, other than the hub shell itself. Mm -hmm. um, but quality hubs. Mm. Everything starts as a hub. Good. We yeah. do build some of the hubs here, but a lot of the hubs come. Most of the hubs come in assembled, but we do build some of the hubs oh, no. here from a shell. 
which if you guys want to come around here, we can, Woo! A little dirty right now. Got a little ah, bit of, little bit of stuff going on. Um, ah, so everything will get serious. built up. This is where a hub will get built up. We put bearings in it, axles, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Throw it into, this is where everything gets staged and spoked up. Um, all of our spokes, different kinds. We use exclusively Supreme spokes, um, mm. mostly CX rays. Mm. Uh, and then they get spoked up here, put into lacing here. So you take your rim, put it on the lacing stand. Oh. And then you'll take your hub, put it in here, wow. makes it super easy. You can just lace it up really quick, mm. easy. This is a very fun machine. Oh. I like this a lot. Um, it feeds, so it feeds, what are we on? Are we doing alloy? <laughs> We didn't make this machine. We made, <laughs> we've modified it a oh, lot. Modified. Yeah, like this, this handle is not a part of it. Oh. Um, you know, a few of the other things are just kind of modified to work better for oh. us. Um, but this thing feeds nipples, so you can. And then. <laughs> and it feeds oh. out nipples. So, wow. <laughs> and then every every wheel has a different. So this is how we put uh, initial tension on it. It's about 20, 30 percent tension. Um, is one of these. This goes inside of here, and it has. If you see, it has a little pin. Oh. There's a pin on there. Um, so that'll kick it out uh, right at the same time every time. Um, so all the nipples are on exactly the same. Um, so you're starting from a good spot to begin with. Um, this just makes it easier for us to have consistency and uh, get wheels through the process because obviously we do a lot of wheels. So that is lacing and then every wheel goes through this machine here uh gets put onto this rail uh it's a pretty fun machine where it actually most people who have this machine will use it as a mm -hmm. in replacement to me him mm -hmm. neil anybody that's a wheel builder and we don't we don't like to use it like that we use it to purely get it up to a, a tension that is easier for mm -hmm. somebody to come in and build the wheel to a finished state. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, yeah, uh, this is more of a, you know, I, I came here or I started here eight years ago before we had this machine mm -hmm. and I still have some, you know, somewhat carpal tunnel issues with my, my wrist. Yeah. So this is mostly to save wheel builders wrists and help us get a lot of wheels through process without hurting our wheel builders, you know? Um, it's really nice, uh, makes life a lot easier. Um, and then every single wheel will go into the truing stands, which you guys do a lot of, I know. Um, so every single wheel will go into the truing stands. We have dials to tell us exactly, you know, how out of true or true it is. Uh, everything everything we try to keep it within 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.3 radial and 0 0.2 uh lateral um at the most that's mm -hmm. like our that's what we try to get every wheel out at um there are obviously wheels that are better than that um but that is kind of our standard and then every wheel has a tension spec uh we use the dt swiss tensio oh, DT probably the one of the most accurate tensios that we have mm -hmm. we calibrate it we have some uh, some spokes that we calibrated against over there. Uh, we calibrate it pretty regularly to make sure that everything is going out exactly how we want it. 
Uh, we do have a modified dish gauge that we made with just a digital gauge so you can actually tell exactly how out of dish it is. Mm -hmm. um, every wheel will, will try and get it within uh, 0.2, 0 .2, negative 0 0.2 mm -hmm. um, out of dish, um, or in dish I should say, but most of them go pretty close to zero. Mm -hmm. um, after a wheel is built, actually I should show you this, sorry I missed a part behind us, every wheel here actually gets built three times. Three times? Yes, because we don't, we don't just build it once, we build it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys probably stress it, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, put it on some sort of box or something like that mm -hmm. to actually put mm -hmm. stress in the spokes. Mm -hmm. um, we have a pneumatic wow. machine, has a little piston there that comes down okay. and puts... 400 pounds of pressure mm -hmm. down onto this wheel. Yeah, uh, pressure three times. Three times. So. Three times. Three times. So rebuild. So it'll just go. Do we have anything? It'll go on there. Press it down. I'm not going to do this one because this one's a rebuild, but um, it puts a bunch of pressure onto it. This cup keeps it so that it's not over doing the bearings there um, doesn't compress on the bearings it protects the axle and the bearings and only presses on the hub and the spokes uh, and since it's all since it's on the entire rim you're stressing all the spokes at the same time at the same pressure flip it over do the same thing and then it'll go back to build get built again get stressed again get built again get stressed again and then get built and finally we're out. Um, so we see that uh, when you stress it on this thing, the first, the first time it usually will lose about 20-ish percent of tension, mm. which is a lot of tension. You know, mm. that's, that's quite a bit of tension. And then the second time it usually loses around eight to 10. And then the third time, maybe two or three percent. Mm. You know, it's, it's very little. Mm. Um, let me know if I need to slow down on anything so you can... Tell them anything. So, go here, build, come back here, and then build again, and then comes back <laughs> three times. Yeah, yeah. So, that's this is the reason that a lot of our, our builds, when they go out, they don't need to get trued up for a long, long time unless you get. You know, unless you have a large impact or something like that. Um, we take all of the stretch and the play out of every spoke and bed all the nipples and bed all the spokes into the hub. So you don't have any chance of uh, it going out of tension, basically, or going out of true. Really cool machine. L lovely name of the squishy machine. That is a... Uh, this was... Uh, Alec White gave it the squishy machine name. Um, when he first saw it, he was like, this, is def this definitely needs a name and it's definitely the squishy machine. Squishy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, you're starting to see a lot of builders start to do something like this. I've seen a couple of them make, and we made this ourselves as well, but a lot of builders have started to try and replicate something like this um, because it, it helps. You have consistency in your builds always. So then a lot of our decals are vinyl decals that are cut over here, weeded. And Ben is doing final step of putting decals on. On the wall of color decals. <laughs> Mm. It's it's a little bit much to like actually see what's going on, mm. but, <laughs> but uh, it's the only way to organize it. There's a lot of decals. Yeah. But yeah, um, then everything once it gets decaled, everything will go into QC, where mm. we make sure everything is up to par with what we 
are expecting. So another DT Swiss gauge over here, mm -hmm. another dish gauge, digital dish gauge. Um, and it'll get put into our system. And so we have a record of how every wheel comes out. Riz, Riz doesn't like the UPS guy. I don't know why. <laughs> it's the only person. Actually, it's a substitute today, so she might like him. We'll see. So, uh, oh yeah, we have the, the squid wheels from last year. Uh -huh. These are the... And actually, so this was mm. the, the squid wheel from last year that was on the bike in our, our booth last year. We saw it, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, this, something not released yet, but uh, 16 spoke disc wheel. Um, oh. This is going to be our new EOS uh, hmm. wheel. We are showing it at MADE, but it is hmm. not released yet. Um, our hmm. Japanese distributor for Rolf will have some hmm. within the next month and he'll start pushing these. But these are uh, very light. Uh, 1385 for the wheels, like the, the 13, 1385. Uh, for the whole wheel set is the, the weight. Um, 1385? Mm-hmm. So 1,385 grams for the whole set. So this is just the front. Normally, this is a, so this is a, um, a prototype rim. So this hub will actually be stealth coated with the Cerakote. Ah, so Cerakote. Cerakote hub, and it'll have XD15 bearings mm. from uh, Enduro, they're really high, high-end ceramic bearings. Mm. Yeah, this one does not have that. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very, very light. Mm. Um, we're pushing it as an all-road. Um, I've been riding it. I'm not a small guy. I've been riding it for a long time, and I've really enjoyed it. It's. Uh, <laughs> it makes me feel like a fast road biker, which I am not. <laughs> um, and uh, I've I have been using it mostly as a road road wheel, but mm -hmm. we designed it so it can be a gravel wheel. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's 25 mil internal, 40 mil deep. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. It has a, it's similar to the Luna or the uh, Aries AR, um, but we did a different layup on the between the nodes so that it lightened up the rim. So this rim is specific to the 16 hole drilling, and that's it. <laughs> so that'll be at the show. This is a show special. Um, yeah. Uh, we're doing this with Old Man Mountain. Uh, I think they are doing racks and uh, a few other things in this anno, uh, special anno. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's like a desert, it's a desert fade, but they basically, uh, yeah, they just changed up the anno process. I really like the inside actually, <laughs> but um, yeah, it came out pretty nice. I liked it. この you guys do anodize in here too? We don't do anodize here. Um we Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't do anodize here. We have a good anodizer. Um we also yeah, we also have a really good seracoder here so that we've trusted and worked with for many many years. So we like Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's the Cerakote. Ah, Cerakote stuff. And actually right now we're mm. in the process. Actually, most of the most of the Outback and Outback Wanderlust Highlight and Highlight 25 rims are all going to be um, black Cerakote now. Um, mm. Uh, we found that Cerakote is it's better than an anodization um, because it's better for cor uh, corrosion resistance. Um, 
corrosion resistance. So if it, uh, like, mm. yeah, so more durable. Yeah, and a. Since you're not anodizing it, anodizing mm -hmm. actually makes a rim uh, a little bit more brittle. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it harder, but more likely to crack. Um, uh, with anodized. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas a raw rim that has been seracoded mm -hmm. uh, has a much longer fatigue life. Oh. Yeah. It looks good too. Yeah. It looks better. Looks too, great. So. Yeah, I like the. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll grab a rim when we go back there, yeah. but I really like the look of the, the mm. black Cerakote as well. Mm. Um, it just, it's matte and mm. has a really good finish and a feel to it. Um, yeah, we've, we've really enjoyed the Cerakote so far. So yeah. So the Cerakote yeah. is only black and gray? Or? Currently, that's what our stock is. Yeah. Um, but we are able to, we're able to Cerakote many different colors. Oh, um, like anodize. Like anodize, like yeah. Anodize. Yeah. Um, the one thing about Cerakote is that it is always going to be matte. It's never oh, going to yeah, be right, right. like shiny. Polish, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. So we, we don't really do them as a stock thing, but we do offer it as a custom upgrade. Oh, so you can like actually mix the color and then do it. So there are there are many colors that you can choose from. They actually have, I mean, if you just go to Cer the Cerakote website, they have pretty much every color. Um, the biggest, the one of the hardest drawbacks, that, not drawback, but um, one of the hardest things is that there are some colors of Cerakote that just don't hold up as well. So we usually stay away from like uh, pinks on a rim. Pink on a hub is okay, but pinks on a rim or yeah. orange on a rim. Mm. It doesn't work as well. It, it just, it fades really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby girl. Um, so Apple. this is where all our stock rooms <laughs> are. Kids up. Um, this. Come on. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Willie's around. Um, so, this is an engineering lab, obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, Willie was up front, or I don't know where he is, but um, Willie is our engineer. Uh, he makes sure that everything goes well. We'll go through the engineering room. This is where everything gets developed and tested. Um, this is the torture chamber. This is where everything gets tested and make sure that oh, our fatigue stink, testing yeah. is great. Um, this is our fatigue tester. It's a drum, massive drum with a bunch of, you can see the little metal uh, bumps in there. Um, and it'll just run, uh, it'll run for hours and hours and hours. We are currently not running anything right now, but um, usually we're running pretty regularly 24 seven. Um, and we'll run wheels overnight. It'll mm -hmm. pop up if there's a, a flat or something like that that happens and then we can fix it in the morning. Beyond that, in the torture chamber. Torture chamber. Yes. Uh, we have a spoke pole through a uh, little torture machine where mm -hmm. a wheel goes in here and then this, uh, this goes down. <laughs> and you this, so this will push the, push the hub down and until we have some spoke come out or, or a lot of the times it doesn't, but um, this will just keep going until, and we can measure deflection on there and everything. Um, oh. So that is our spoke pull through. This is our lateral stiffness test. So this, you put the hub in here, the wheel here, and then it mm. will pull the hub up and give us an exact reading mm. of how much, uh, how much force it takes to, to mm -hmm. uh, make some play in the in the wheel. Ah, mm -hmm. this uh, is the rim. One side so no, this is the wheel. That's the wheel. So a wheel, a wheel will go on here, the hub will go here, and 
this will this will keep going down and push the spokes、uh, like、uh, cave it in basically、uh. so you're torturing the spokes yeah so、right? we're trying to we're trying to make it so that the spokes、mm. we want to we want to get to a point where、uh, we can measure where the the spoke might pull through、um, mm. it doesn't normally do it every time but So this will go on here, and then usually this would be lower because the where the、uh, hub is, but. So, you're just maybe once you get to the hub, you start pushing it down, all of the spokes in,、mm. until it pulls out something out of the rim. Is the is the point? And just keep torturing it until it goes out.、Um, and we can measure the deflection that it takes, or how how far down it it goes before it pulls out a spoke. This one measures lateral deflection. Lateral. So if I have an if I had an axle in here, you could actually put it in here. And then it will go down in here, and it'll go underneath the underneath the rim and pull up.、Mm-hmm. It'll just pull up until,、mm-hmm. and and it'll give us an exact reading of how much force it takes to pull and、mm-hmm. how far it goes and or how much deflection there is. Oh,、uh, that one is push, and this one is pull. Pull, yes, but it is only measuring、uh, how much like. You'll feel lateral if if you'll feel lateral play or anything、oh. like that. Behind us is one of the last ones where it goes into this guy,、uh, and then we drop it, and it drops.、Uh, we have different.、Uh, we have different anvils to go on here, different amounts of weight, and we will. Break every single wheel that we put through this testing,、um, and see how much it takes to get to that point.、Um, it'll have a tire on it and all that kind of stuff. But ah. <laughs> 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 ちょっとテストしてもらおうか。Oh yeah, you want to come? How much? <laughs> oh no. So the usually it can、uh, re- like, resist like. That、yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we will we'll <laughs> keep stacking it up until it until it does、uh, oh、break the wheel.、Um, Yeah. So、uh, it, every single wheel that we make, we we make sure that they are they are good to go. For hey, it's Willie. Willie's the engineer. Hi, Hi guys. Hi.、Uh, so Willie's been here as long as I've been here. I was here longer by two weeks. Yeah, that's true. A few months. So,、um, but this is kind of his domain. I kind of took your your thunder, man. I I I showed them everything that you like to play with. Perfect, perfect. I don't know why I talk. We got a long weekend ahead of us. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah.、Um, yeah. Um, so what's the the strongest rim that can、um, resist with this? How? What's the heaviest weight? So、uh, we have a Serpentine Carbon X, which is、uh, probably the strong. Is that the? That's probably the strongest、yeah. one. But the big trick is what tire you're using on them too. Yeah. Because we don't test all the rims with no tire on them because. Uh, Your tire makes a big difference.、Uh, yeah, 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 But the Serpentine、yeah. Carbon X is the one that's usually built up with a really big tire, pretty high、uh, pressure, and it lasts the best. Yeah. Yeah. これって製品化するってなったらどれぐらいの時間回してるものが製品化 OK になるんですか ？This this machine,、uh, how like how long do you have to run to be able to make the to the to go、down. through? Yeah. Uh, so there is a series of tests、uh, that all go over around two thousand minutes, but、um, it adds up because we continue to use the same rim, usually same wheel, and everything like that. So, and it's different 
tires that go on that. So there's a series of different tire tests that go on the same wheel, if that makes sense. So at the end, some wheels will go up to 8,000 minutes or, or some that go, yeah. Especially with the all road, which are supposed to go all the way down 28 millimeters up to the big ones. Um, the small hard tires of 28 millimeters at like 120 PSI, you'll get spoke hole cracks. But when you use a big fat tire on them, you'll get nipple uh, axis hole cracks and a mm. variation of stuff in between. Mm. So the mm. different tires dresses different parts of the room. Mm. So we have to mm. check them all. Mm. And obviously a lot of the tests are done at different pressures than you might do in the, the real world, mm. but they're tested at extremes basically mm. um, to make sure that everything, if somebody ends up doing 120 PSI on a 28 mil tire, which mm. sounds awful to me, um, they, We'll be okay. <laughs> so we're trying to do the bearings and the hubs, right? So um, this is all so we can do hub designs. Hub design? Yeah, we need to get the axle and the bearings perfect. Um, if they're too tight, you can hear it. And if they're too uh, wide, you can hear it. And then we test the hub designs on the free hub tester. And then we listen to the hubs to make sure the bearings aren't bad. A lot of small stuff. Uh, but it does do the trick. It's pretty cool. Um, that's a this is a free, ab a free up body fatigue test. So just run it for hours and hours and hours, just free wheeling. Um, yeah. Make sure that the paws are good, the springs are good, everything, any design that we've done, make sure that it will last forever for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more. Uh, this is more of like <laughs> Willie's <laughs> creative. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's creative room. He's got all of this stuff in here. Um, 3D printer. Uh, kind of just a space for him to get super messy uh, and figure out what we're gonna do next. You know, um, it's kind of. The area that tire tire fit tests happen, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tire fit tests. Will you have anything else on this area? This is kind of just yeah, tools and what do you got? Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh, thank oh you. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's super nice. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. What a fit. Oh, pink hubs, yeah. Mm. 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 You have anything else fun and special? Um, I was pulling out this guy. Um, the six ball prototype we got working on. Shh. Shh. We're not going to get very far with this. <laughs> oh, no, no, no camera. Whoa, it's a snake. Uh, so this one used a uh, spring uh, that was all one piece. Oh, one but we're not going to go forward with this design. So it's really cool while we have it. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes too much work to make this spring. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Of course. <laughs> so that's the. The Serico hub for oh. that 16 hole. So it's cool. It's cool. 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 いいの。天球。オッケー。かっこいいやっぱり。セラコートグレーやりたいな。ちょっとあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの
Uh, so, going into rim production. Alloy wheels. Uh, we have extrusion uh, for different profiles over here. Um, so every, all of the alloy rims start as one of these sticks. One of these long sticks. Wow. Uh, and then get put onto a roller. I love that coil over there by your Oh, you did. Thank you. So it'll go on to this. We have two rollers. One is usually set up for mm. 650, the other is set up for 700 usually. Um, but we'll switch out the dies for different profiles um, and uh, just how they're set up. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for production to have two, which is really nice. Um, it will, that stick, that long, long stick will go into this machine, uh, roll, roll up and roll a coil like this where mm. it's two rims. Mm. Um, comes out, drops into the, the, we have a little dispenser thing over there, but uh, mm -hmm. then come over here into our saw. We've got two saws, 29 inch or 700C, 27.5 or 650. Oh. Um, throw it in the saw, clamps down everything. It's perfectly, make sure that it's all there perfectly like centered and all that kind of stuff. Uh, makes a cut and then you have two rims that look like this, oh. right? So they just have uh, one cut on there mm -hmm. and then all sorts of extra tails, oh. as we call them. So that extra little, this area right here mm -hmm. just gets put into aluminum recycling. Uh, I've always wanted to figure out what we can do that mm -hmm. would be really fun as like an, a project to uh, make, these, make something out of these tails, but I don't know. We'll figure it out someday. Mm -hmm. So if you can think of anything to do with this, let me know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> after, so after they get cut, the rims will all come over here where they get joined which we've kind of moved mm. everything around right now, but um, no, they'll get it pretty good. Yeah, uh, we stopped using this thing recently. Um, so you do the epoxy joining and prep over here. Um, <laughs> then where are we insert? We use this insert in the center of these guys um, at the seam, wherever the seam is. Ha -ha. And then you'll have to load it up on this guy and now press fit it all really tight together. Mm. Um, the epoxy is only for sound. It's not really for holding it together. Yeah. Um, we have welded rims in the past, but decided to go away from welding hmm. because we found that the amount of force that it takes to break a hmm. joined rim, an inserted rim, hmm. um, would break other parts of the rim. You're in hmm. other trouble. Uh, so. We get a lot more consistency out of a rim that is uh, insert press fit together rather than uh, welded because on a weld you have to sand it afterwards and you get a little bit of inconsistency there. Then it gets a valve hole. Uh, nothing super special there. I mean, you did just get a new drill press, always fun. Um, and then it gets checked for roundness, flatness oh, on so. this, sorry, <laughs> compressor. Um, <laughs> So uh, it gets checked for roundness, flatness, and everything. Um, every rim gets checked so we are sure that they go out as a good rim. Um, after this area, once they are all joined uh, and ready, do you have anything else on this area, Will? No, you got it. Cool. Um, after they are joined, they will come over here. Hmm. Choo, 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 choo. To this drill, we actually... Uh, we actually made this drill a while back. Um, a former uh, engineer actually made this drill pretty much from the ground up. Um, it's an angle drill. It does all sorts of different angles and m almost all of our rims are drilled on this machine. Um, 
and it has a CNC that actually has every program for whole count, size, different rim. Uh, well, I guess the, the CNC only has whole counts, but, and angles. Um, <coughs> it goes in, do you want to show them how yeah, it works? Absolutely. It's a little loud, so we'll, we'll back up a little bit, but. The vacuum is the most loud. Oh, okay. So everything else is just uh, You're gonna run it without a vacuum? Nope, All right. use a vacuum. <laughs> What time do y'all have to go to uh, oh, 530? This okay. Is, yeah. okay. Like, I didn't wanna no, I didn't no, wanna no. take y'all the time. I, I don't wanna take your time. Mm. Pick up your time. No, it's okay. Are you from here? Not originally, I'm actually from Arizona. Oh just a little skip it. Yeah. Okay. Every time it goes up and down, it's checking for the measurements to make sure it's right. If it's not right, it tries to get it. Uh, so it'll just keep doing that. It'll it'll drill all the holes, and it does it uh, from both sides at the same time, so they're concentric. Uh, so you don't have any issues of like uh, trying to get your if it's an internal rim, trying to get your uh, nipple wrench in there uh, and on it. So that's that. Uh, before we move move on, yeah. behind Will, and it's not, <laughs> he's trying to hide it. Uh, we have, <laughs> so the reason that polishing takes so long and it's awful uh, for us on a like production side is just how much work it actually goes into it. You have to do many steps, but we have a little, basically a fixture that moves the rim around so somebody can actually hand polish a little bit easier. Um, behind you guys right now, this is a lathe. So for rim brake rims, uh, this will cut the brake track oh. all the way around. And the cool thing about this lathe is that it has two cutters. So it cuts it at the same time. So we are fully concentric on, and you never have any like uh, blips in the, it's gonna make it really noisy back here. <laughs> so that is what he just put it in as a shaker. It'll shake out all the excess debris from drilling. So, like, it'll take out all these in the alloy. So that's just like some of these will get stuck in the rim, and this will just shake it all out. Thank you. We use a black drill bit on the nipple axis hole. So there's less shaking, but that's what causes those really weird burns. Mm. Okay. Um, and then everything gets QC'd and checked in. These are all, so this is, uh, these are rims that just got back from Cerakote. Um, so this is the Cerakote finish. Obviously, in the, yeah, of course. Uh, that's an Outback rim. Um, and once they're cleaned off, they feel a little bit better, but um, I think they look great. And we've tested it, and the Cerakote rims just fatigue a lot better. Yeah. Um, so, a longer lasting rim. Mm -hmm. And those will get all checked into our stock. What are you saying? Kawaii. <laughs> she doesn't like being in the back because it's yeah. noisy. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like trying to wrangle me and bring me back up. 
Like it's too noisy back here. Fuck, Tony it comes out. Oh. So that's basically, mm. that's the, that's kind of everything. Do you guys have any questions on anything? クロノセラコートのリムが普段はレギュラーの色ですけど、他の色って作ることはできるんですか？アストラルのリムで。So the Seraco, the Astro Grams, uh, the black is the usual, like you usually stock black. Correct. Yes. And then no other color. Uh, yeah, we usually only stock the black and the Astro. Yeah. Um, on the Rolf Prima side, we have that gray. Yeah. Um. But yes, that is that's what we stock. Yeah. I will say I'm open to doing yeah. other colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you guys have any colors that you guys like a lot, let me know. Um, I am open to doing that. Ato Astral no brand name. What's the Astral came from? The name uh, so uh, obviously we were Rolf Prima first. Yeah. We were here in yeah. this building. Um, the Astro brand came around uh, about seven years ago now. Uh, we uh, decided on the name because in that year we had the full solar eclipse came through Eugene. Um, and we decided that we needed a an star-like name because of that. There was a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the full solar eclipse. But. Yeah. It was and yeah, it was here in Eugene was where you could see it the most. It was a total eclipse. So that's why the sticker is Yes, yeah, yeah, that's why the sticker is the two like a moon and a sun crossing over. Yeah. あるものとないものがあるんですよ。ディスクリムでも。ワイドウィドゥ。なんかもうあるものだけでいいのかなって僕らは思ってたんですけど、なんでそうでだってディスクリムでもないですかはい。うん、そう。そう。そう。そう。
、で僕らはそれ普段使ってなくって、うん、それ以外のフィ例えばフィルトの普通のニップルとかでもホイール組むのは別に問題ないんですか so, for the nipples,、uh, Any kind of nipples would be fine to build the wheel, or、mm. because you recommend the specific. Ah, secular sapim. We use sapim、mm. only、uh, on our wh-、mm. wheels,、mm. but you are, you, you are able to use other people's nipples, yes. Is there, is there a reason? We use sapim because we have worked with them for a long time、mm. and we really enjoy their stuff and we think their、uh, spokes and nipples are、mm. some of the spoke, best spokes and nipples in the,、mm. in the world. Um, so we, we stick with them.、Mm-hmm. We also really like the double square、uh, mm-hmm. nipple that they have.、Mm-hmm. So you can build all your wheels from the inside.、Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously, you have your external、mm-hmm. uh, nipple driver,、mm-hmm. but we, we use their double square one for、mm-hmm. our external. So you can use this、mm-hmm. alone. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> it makes it, al- yeah, the tennis ball. <laughs> so, I don't know. The, it, it makes it so that your hand doesn't cramp or anything like that. You're,、oh. When you're building wheels all day, every day, you got to try and figure out the most、uh, ergonomic ways to hold things.、Um, like all of our desks are at specific heights so that the builder isn't leaning、yeah. over or、mm-hmm. like this.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything, everything is made so the builder is. Comfortable.、Mm. So, Ben, Neil, myself, any builder is very comfortable building wheels. He's going to do the same thing with the tennis ball. It's a good idea. <laughs> so, this is probably one of my favorite machines. This is the, almost the very last step other than being put into a box. This is a tape machine which will be made out of. Stroller wheels and yeah, so、um, oh. tubeless tape. Ah, tubeless tape. So, so、ah. you're familiar with how much it is difficult to get it lined up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing that for many wheels a day is it, yeah, it's, it's extremely hard. So, um, <laughs> So, Will specifically picked out these you know, rollerblade wheels and stroller wheels to perfectly fit our, our rim profiles. High tech. <laughs> High tech. <laughs> so, <laughs> different, different、uh, width tapes. For different rims, obviously, so you have a different、uh, shim for each one.、Uh, put your tape on. Start it up. Oops. Oh, I just messed that, buggered that one up. Oh, yeah, for it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> めちゃくちゃ綺麗<笑> DJ みたいな,なんか<笑>すーげーおーおーおーすーげーすげー綺麗だよ No bubbles? Oh, there is a bubble! <gasps> no! That's my fault <laughs> I didn't do it right But Uh, very efficient way of taping wheels. No longer need to sit there struggling like this.、Uh, it's something that we've, we've contemplated you know, making and selling to shops because it's an amazing tool.、Uh, you, but it's you also. Have sold we've that s- <laughs> No, we have not sold、oh, this okay, machine. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear.、Yeah. But we thought about it for a little bit、yeah. because it is a really,、yeah. really awesome tool yeah, yeah, for yeah, shops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who do a lot of wheel、yeah. builds? Like, it is one of the worst things yeah, to yeah. tape wheels、yeah. all day. It hurts the hands and you get bubbles in it and you gotta restart.、うん、This thing makes everything simple、うん、and fast. これ真似したいな、これもう作るしかないですよ。Yeah. 強度とか耐久性に対してのこだわりをすごくテストとかで感じるけど。
そうなったきっかけって何か出来事があるんですか So,、uh, since we started as Rolf only, the paired spoke design,、uh, we had to, we wanted to make sure that the, the spokes would never pull through because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of force going to the same spot on the rim. So, we、uh, have a thicker,、uh, a thicker spoke bed、um, that actually makes it so that you have a rim that's. A little bit heavier, but also a stronger and a lot easier to build up, I think,、um, because of that thicker spoke bed.、Yeah. It was built out of necessity, basically.、Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we also believe that you, know, you want to have a wheel set that lasts forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah.、Um, that's part of the philosophy of. Us and white industries is just having something that you can have forever.、Um, you know, white industries hubs are known for being able to use them for 20, 30 years, and they try as much as they can to make something that was 20 something years old usable again and even upgradable. Like, they went from 24 tooth to 48 tooth in the Uh, a while back now, but、um, mid 2000s, we, we changed from 24 to 48,、um, and that was just a drive ring change.、Mm. So you could take your hub that was 25, 30 years old and change it to a modern spec.、Mm. You can change out the axles on it to make it relevant to any, any bike nowadays. So, like, it's or the opposite,、mm. you know? You can, Retrofy your yeah, modern yeah, hub, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah.、Um, it's kind of one of the things that is a core principle of、mm. our businesses, is just making sure that we have things that last forever. Wheel を組むときに、細かな用意とかで、ここすごい重要だ,のだよねみたいなところってありますか用意用意とかなんか、こう、下処理というか、ちょっとした加工みたいな。What's like, is there any like a important Um, secrets of, of building a wheel? <laughs> Important secrets? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Or some, like,、uh, something very necessary? I mean, the tensiometer is one of the most necessary things to making a really nice wheel.、Um, having that DT Swiss Tensio really helps us make sure that every wheel goes out、uh, extremely balanced in tension. And when you have a wheel that is starting out at a good place, super balanced tension, it is less likely to go out of true down the line.、Um, and I guess the second one would be that squishy machine. That、no. squishy machine is, it really makes everything,、uh, once it leaves this factory, just reliable.、So. Any like,、uh, little tricks? Any little tricks? Yeah. <laughs> Some, something. Um, During the process. <laughs> you know, it, it's. We try to keep. We try to keep our tensions as balanced as possible. Is that, that's the biggest trick, I guess. And, and、um, I don't know if there's any specific tricks yeah, yeah, yeah. to that. I mean, obviously, you, you start with truing the wheel and then,、yeah. and then trying to. Uh, move the imbalances of tension around the wheel a little bit until you get it so you have a true wheel and a wheel that is extremely balanced.、Um, I don't have a good trick, trick, <laughs> but I feel like you have a trick for me. Because I feel like you've built a lot, built a lot of wheels too. <laughs> yeah, 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 We could. <laughs> But I feel like you, have, you guys are known for making really nice wheels as well. So I, I am really happy to be working with you guys because it it's really great to know that our rims are going to people who know how to 
make them into a really nice wheel. So thank you. 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 Thank a while ago, when we were uh, we when we set up any Rolf Prima mm. distributor, mm. Uh, after a few years, we we try to go over there and you know make sure that mm. they are doing everything correctly, and then we set them up as a service shop mm. that can service our wheels the way that we expect them to be serviced. Mm. Um, so in that, usually we try to make a manual version of that mm. that squishy machine mm. which is actually easily done mm. if you wanted to do it yourself mm. um by making some sort of platform like that mm. um having a structure and mm. then using uh, a torque wrench you could use a torque wrench mm. and mm. always like you could always get that piston to go down exactly the amount that you want so mm. That is, that's what we've done for a lot of our distributors is we've actually made one of these machines for them. Um, but yeah, that is, that's what I would do if I was a shop. Um, but yeah. How, how about like, can you, you can do it with your body? Yes, if you don't have any experience, you can do the same thing and the same thing. How about like, can he... Do it, do it with your body? Yeah, or something. Uh, like maybe kind of. So create a. Same effect. So uh, create a box, mm. like a box Box. With, uh, with a cutout for the rim. Mm. And then get a, make sure that you have a cup. Like. Uh, make sure you have one of these cups. And then you could. Put it on your box mm -hmm. with the, the hole in it mm -hmm. uh, that is holding the rim, mm -hmm. and then put it there, and then. Ah! <laughs> nice it idea. won't be as accurate, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how much you weigh, so I don't know yeah, if yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. exact right, <laughs> but yeah. you know, um, that is a way to get it very consistently getting all the spokes at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, Simple, like, don't worry about it. And that making it into a machine too mm. is really cool because you can, you could take two pieces of the extrusion, mm -hmm. have like a little thing around it, and have a little piston, and use a torque mm. wrench. It's very cool. Ah, ah very consistent. Ah. Yeah. なるほど。帰ったらそれでちょっとOKです。Okay. Okay. So initially, he'll start out by just seeing where the, the wheel is at, um, getting initial tensions, getting initially what trueness it is, um, radially and laterally. Then he'll start getting into doing the radial, making sure the radial is as round as possible to begin with. Um, and then moving to his lateral, getting his lateral as true as possible, and then later on getting into moving tensions throughout the wheel um, to balance it out. This may have been a wheel that has already been built by Neil who is not here right now. Oh. <laughs> so it may be in a really good spot already. <laughs> no? He did a lot already? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I was worried taking it out of the, the stand there. But so right now he's just going on Rolf Primo. We usually do node to node for radial uh, because of the, the design. That's the easiest way to get it to a good radial trueness first. Um, on Astral, it's more of finding your finding your, your ends. Like so, uh, if you see the, the dials, finding where oh. where it's the worst out of true and mm. then bringing that back in mm. bringing this side back in mm. um yeah
And usually we'll build, depending on the day, anywhere from, you know, our goal is to be somewhere around four-ish wheel sets per builder per day is kind of our goal. Um, but some days builders will build 20 wheel sets. Some days builders will build three, you know, or two, you know. Um, it really depends on the day and what, what we're doing that day. And now he's double checking his tensions, what tensions he's trying to get at. Uh, that's another thing that on our wheels, um, all the spokes have that uh, little uh, the square part on the spokes. Mm -hmm. So you can see it on this too. This oh. one's a bladed spoke, so you could just put it on the blade. Mm -hmm. But uh, all of our spokes have a, a square part mm -hmm. that we have these little tools to keep it from mm -hmm. twisting the spoke. Mm -hmm. When the wheel is built, there is never going to be a time where the spoke mm -hmm. is twisted and then comes untwisted after somebody rides it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving tension around a little bit, looking pretty tight. Speedy. Speed. Mm. That one was already pretty close, but Ben can Ben can build that fast even yeah. even with a with a, <laughs> a wheel that's a little less done. Oh, 